DMEC in monocular patients is always a little bit of a special privilege, but also a particular pressure to perform. If you have a patient travel from far away and they just have one eye, and especially if that eye is sick and has been operated on by good cornea specialists in the past, it gives you a little bit of a pause because you really feel like you need to do a good job for this patient. And I want to share with you such a patient that we operated on just a couple of days ago in our office. This is a gentleman who traveled from far away to see us. This is his only eye. He's had three failed penetrating keratoplasties in this eye in the past several years. And the eye is also glaucomatous. And you'll notice that at 12 o'clock, he has this inflamed looking little filtering bleb. So we've taken him up to try to rehabilitate his penetrating graft with a DMEC. You'll notice we're making our paracentesis and even our main wound in the sclera. And I've had to learn this lesson the hard way, that in eyes with previous PK, if you make corneal incisions, you are asking for them to leak during and after the case. And you'll find that the eye is so much more stable if you'll initiate these incisions in the sclera and then tunnel up and in. I've got an anterior chamber maintainer going connected to air, and I'm scoring Decimase membrane under air using an inverted Sinsky hook. Another lesson I've had to learn the hard way is to initiate the score inside of the graft host junction, not at the graft host junction. Because if you're not careful, you can dehiss that wound from the inside. So I start just slightly inside that junction. I score around, and then I grab often this fibrotic decimase membrane here, you'll notice with coaxial, in this case, MST forceps. And I like these forceps because it allows me to go around and pick at these little tags of Decimase membrane, which are incorporated into the interface that you'll never get just by sort of picking at them with the inverted Sinsky hook alone or even the uh, Mellis scraper alone. This for me is the most meticulous part of the operation, to go around and remove all of these little remnant shreds of fibrotic thickened decimase membrane, which if you leave will definitely interfere with attachment of the DMAC graft. In my experience, DMET grafts attach better when the indication for surgery is bullous keratopathy than for Fuchs dystrophy, which is weird, which is counterintuitive. It's paradoxical. Why would the graft attach better in a sick eye than in a relatively healthy eye? And I don't have the answer to that question, but I do know that if you're having trouble with your attachment of DMAT grafts and these type eyes, it may be because you have little remnants of Desmase membrane left behind. So I am spending most of the time of this surgery trying to remove remnants where I'm afraid the graft will interact with them. The way I size the graft is I use a graft that's typically a millimeter smaller than the measured diameter of the PK in the office. In this particular patient, their graft was 7.75 millimeters, so I'm using a 6.75 millimeter graft. And I like that because it gives me the most amount of cells, but also some freedom from the possibility of interacting with the edge. Now, I'm not removing the epithelium, but I'm removing some of this scarified fibrotic epithelium around the edges of the graft. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to be able to see what's going on at the edges of the transplant. That's the key part of the eye that I have to see is the graft interacting with the edge of the PK. And if I can't see what's going on there, I can't tell. So I'm not stripping all the epithelium off the transplant. I'm just removing the fibrotic knuckles of epithelium over the recipient host junction so I can see into the eye at what's going on at that location. So here I am injecting the graft into the anterior chamber. It's accompanied by these few little bubbles. And always the first thing to do is to remove these bubbles. So I'm going to aspirate these bubbles with a cannula with BSS in the cannula. And here's another tip for you. When you're aspirating bubbles from the eye, never 
aspirate bubbles with a cannula connected to a syringe filled with air. Because if you do, if you're aspirating air with an air-filled syringe, then the next time you go to inject air with that syringe, you'll get foam. So if you've experienced a DMEX surgery where you're trying to inject air into the anterior chamber and you're pushing the plunger and you're pushing it and nothing is happening and nothing is happening, and then there's this explosion of air bubbles into the anterior chamber, that's why. That's why that's happening. So if you won't aspirate air with the air syringe, it won't happen. So if I'm aspirating air from the anterior chamber, I'm always using a cannula tipped on a BSS syringe. So here I am removing these little bubbles from the anterior chamber, and I have to deepen the chamber to see what's going on with the graft, what's happening, okay? So I'm using the main wound, again, like I always do, because it's so much easier to maneuver and manipulate, and you're not gonna flush the graft out of the eye. I'm zooming in so I can see what's going on, and the question is, are we right side up or upside down? It looks, looking into the eye, like we're lucky, like we're right side up. So that's great. I can shallow the chamber and use a few Dirazomer taps on the surface of the cornea, and here we go, the graft is unfolded but this is actually the most difficult part of the operation. In eyes that have PKs, the most difficult part of the surgery is usually centering the graft. I don't know why, but for me, that's always the most challenging thing. So here the graft is mostly centered, but a little nasally decentered. Here's how you center it. Here are those same coaxial forceps. I'm reaching through the wound and I'm dragging the graft over. And you see how simple and elegant and quick and easy that is? That is so much easier than trying to bump the graft over or to manipulate it with an air bubble or jets of fluid. Just grab it and pull it over. There's no way that is more injurious to the cells than it is to uh, knock against them with an air bubble for five or 10 minutes. If you can solve the problem in two seconds, that's the safest thing to do. And here I am now pressurizing the eye with an air bubble and this is what the, opera, what the eye looks like at the end of the case. So peripheral iridotomy was made. I am going to put a stitch in the main wound just for safety's sake. I don't normally do that, but in this gentleman who came from far away and this is his only eye, I think it's sort of a nice little thing to add to the operation. So um, I think that the key thing about this case that uh, sort of the key learning points are if you have a PK, for me it's always better. It's always better to try to rehabilitate that PK with a DMEC than it is to just throw in the towel and do a new PK. You'd be shocked what kind of quality vision you can get by putting a DMEC on the back of the PK. When I am doing these operations, the things that I have the most trouble with, the things that I struggle with, are stripping the decimase membrane. But doing it under air and using a coaxial forcep to grab and directly engage the fibrotic shreds makes that so much easier to do. When you inject the graft into the eye, you have to be able to see. So I will do whatever I have to do preoperatively or intraoperatively to see. And that includes debriding the epithelium when I need to do it. I'm ruthless about that if I need it to see. Once the graft is in the eye, usually unfolding is not that big of a deal. But for eyes that have a previous PK, centration is the problem. And the graft is usually easier to center where you're not overlapping the recipient host junction. If you have a smaller graft, one millimeter or less than the previous PK diameter, and rather than knocking on the surface of the eye with the cannula, just grab the graft with your forceps and drag it over. It's so much quicker and easier and simpler. These are the techniques and the tools that we use to do even these complicated surgeries in our office under topical anesthesia. So it's such a privilege to be able to do these type surgeries. And I hope that sort of the suffers that we've gone through and the painful lessons that I have learned make your operations a little easier.